Okay, so let's take a look at making a pad from some slightly more complex vocal material. Here's a clip I've downloaded. La, 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 mm. So really nice vocal tone, but you can hear a lot more fluctuations in pitch and dynamics. So it's gonna become a bit more challenging. I've picked it though because I can hear clearly that we've got some sustained portions of singing here that's going to make our lives a lot easier. If you go for really short samples or samples with lots of fluctuations, you're just making your life really difficult if you want a nice smooth pad sound. So this particular sound is actually a free download. It's off a website called freesound.org. And this is by a singer called Katie. I think you can buy her music on digifishmusic.com. I really like the tone of this and I'd certainly go on there and look for more samples that she's created. So let's actually take this and chuck it straight into our Simpler. And I've got a MIDI clip set up that is just a C looping over four bars. And we're simply going to activate loop and that link to glue the start marker to the beginning of the loop brace. And I'll add a little bit of crossfade in. And again, you can do this in simpler. It's just a touch more difficult. And then with this playing, we'll just move that loop around and find a nice section of audio. So that would work straight away. That could work. Possibly with a shorter loop brace. I think I like the section right at the beginning, to be fair. So let's move in. Just set our loop brace. So again, we're looking to avoid too much movement at the beginning of the crossfade. Somewhere like that should uh, do nicely. Now you can clearly hear that this is a loop, but it's still fairly smooth. And once we've looked at some effects that will smooth that over, it should be a really, um, it should be really well disguised. Now you can go for things with a more obvious loop. They'll give you more shimmering type sounds. If you go too obvious, it, it will just sound like it's looping over and it sound a bit naff. But as I say, if you want the smooth stuff, you need to do your homework and just make sure you've got some nice samples to start with. Put ingredients, good ingredients in, and you'll come out with a good final product. So now that we've found our loop, let's see what key it is, what pitch. Okay, so this is a G sharp. So I'm just gonna change my root down to G sharp. And that sounds pretty naff. Let's try the best interpolation and still pretty naff. And this is often the case um, with uh, vocal samples. So a good thing to do is warp them before you put them into your sampler. Now, to be clear, if you were writing your track in, the, in this key of uh, G and G sharp, that would be absolutely fine. You wouldn't need to, to do any work, but we're not. So I'm going to snap that back to C3 and I'm going to do the, the warping elsewhere. So I'll copy this down, turn our warping on. We'll move this to just loop up roughly that section that we were hearing. Doesn't need to be perfect for this. And I'm gonna go for Complex Pro. And then we just need to transpose this accordingly. So if we were G sharp, we go A, A sharp, B, and C. So it's only four semitones. And let's have a listen. Hear the difference? Much, much cleaner straight away. Now, what I find is that you can get even better results if you tweak the envelope control. The way that Ableton have got this set up is that it works normally pretty well around 128, 
but with a little bit of tweaking, you can normally get it better. And the way to do this, and often with parameters like this, is to go with the extremes first. So really push it hard in one direction or another to get your ears used to the sound it produces. And then you're able to focus on that and balance it when you're doing more subtle adjustments in the middle of the parameter range. So have a listen. So for me, somewhere around here is reducing as much of that raspy top end artifact without getting into the kind of distorted pitch that we were hearing as we were right at the bottom of the envelope range. So I'm going to go for something like that. Then in order to get my full sample, or at least a decent section of it, I'll increase the loop brace because we're now going to freeze and flatten. So this will embed our warping into the audio clip. And we'll now swap this out. So I'll have to set up our loop again, which is no real hardship. Something like that should do us. Let's just see if we can go a bit further, actually. There we go. That's quite nice. Now, you're not going to get this perfect. Don't freak out over it, because we're going to use some effects to deal with this now. In fact, we might, just out of curiosity, wonder what will happen if we take this down an octave. Too much. Too much for sure. Let's stick with where we were. OK, so let's give this a go now and have a listen to this playing our chord. Uh, I am still at C4. Not sure how that happened. Let's just move that back down. Here we go. OK, so that can work well. Now for the effects to disguise the loop. So we've seen as soon as we throw a reverb on it works, but the other thing that's great is something like a delay. And because we like some nice width in our pads, we'll go for a ping pong delay. And I'm going to go all the way wet with this. And let's have a listen now. Let's pull that back. You can hear how the loop the actual loop points seem to have just disappeared. So in we go. Let's give ourselves more of a pad sound, a pad shape, sorry, to work with. I think we'll go for a bit, bit longer on that release. Let's try that. Going to bring the volume down a touch. And then to smooth it all out, of course, in comes the reverb. We'll go quite heavy on this. Quite a long time. I'm going to go maximum stereo and size, high quality mode. Okay, and let's take some of those lows out. Let's also get uh, an EQ in. So standard processors, all the stuff we've been using before. But they get results. I'm going to bring this forward and chuck it in here. And there you have it, working really, really nicely. Now, once you've got it set up, there is nothing to, to stop you sort of exploring the sound that you've brought in. You could start, for example, with the, the ping pong and the reverb and the EQ 
and try and find your way through the sample that way because you will get different tones and textures. But for just the nice, simple, um, sustained and very smooth pad sound, this technique will get you there 99% of the time.